This video is sponsored by Skillshare. Go to skl.sh slash theplainbagel3 to get a free two month premium trial. On investment news channels, there are often ribbons with scrolling text or tables to the side showing future prices. You might see that gold futures are trading at $1,500 or that oil futures are trading at 55. These prices don't equal what the commodity is currently trading at, so what are they? Some magic numbers showing what these commodities will trade for at a later date? Well, yeah. Kind of. You see, these numbers are related to the aptly named future derivative, an investment security that involves buying and selling of an asset, typically a standardized commodity, in the future. These investments were originally intended for producers looking to manage business costs, but have since evolved into a fundamental component of the investment industry. They have many uses, and while they are complex in nature, they can fundamentally alter the traits of your portfolio if used properly. So today, let's go over futures, the related forward contract, and why people use them on today's plain bagel. Imagine you are a baker who makes bagels. You sell these bagels for $6 a dozen, and we'll say that the only ingredient is flour, which costs you $4 a batch. Great bagels, I know. Your gross profit for every dozen bagels ends up being $2. Not bad for your small operation. But the cost of flour plays an important role in maintaining this margin. And if it were to increase to, say, $6, you'd be in a bit of a pickle. So, being the proactive business owner you are, you decide to reach out to a flour producer and enter a supply agreement, where in a year's time, you'll buy flour from them at a locked-in price. This ensures that you'll be able to buy flour for the same price further down the road. And while you'll simultaneously trade away any upside you'd experience if prices of flour dropped, it will at least allow you to spend less time worrying about the market and more time making bagels. This is essentially how a future works. A future is a derivative agreement that involves the sale of something at a future date, with a predetermined price, known as the forward price, which is determined today. The person who goes long on the contract is a person who agrees to buy the item in question and pays the forward price, in this case our baker. And the person who shorts the contract agrees to sell at the forward price, in this case the flower producer. When someone enters a future contract, they are obligated to carry out the transaction for the underlying asset in the future at the delivery date, no matter how profitable or unprofitable it ends up being. While these contracts originated as a way for companies to hedge their costs, such as in our example, these days, future contracts are widely used by speculators looking to gain exposure to anything from oil to orange juice, precious metals to livestock. They can even be used to gain exposure to financial assets, like individual stocks, treasury bonds, popular indices like the S&P 500, and now, even Bitcoin. So, how do these futures offer speculators exposure to the price appreciation of an asset? Well, let's go through an example. Imagine that you want to invest in gold. You believe a recession is coming and that investors will flock to the metal as a safe haven, something that will increase the price of the precious metal. The spot price, or current market price for an ounce of gold, is $1,500. However, you don't want to physically buy and sell the commodity, so you instead turn to the futures market, where you can get 100 ounces of the stuff in a year's time at a forward price of $1,550 an ounce. Now, the higher future price takes into account a number of factors, such as inflation, risk-free rates of return, and the costs and income received for holding the asset. But to simplify things, future prices will typically be lower for assets that are beneficial to hold, like dividend-paying stocks, and higher for assets that are costly to hold, such as cattle, which you have to feed. After all, for something that's costly to hold, buying the asset in the future means you avoid those costs and leave them to the person going short on the contract, so the price will compensate them for this. There's actually a formula for determining what a future contract forward price should be, but that could take up a whole video itself. So we'll just stick with the basics here. But going back to our example, for the gold contract, you decide to take a long position, agreeing to buy 100 ounces for a total of $155,000, the price per ounce times 100 ounces. The money you make on the investment, your return, will depend on the spot price of the asset when the contract expires in one year. If the price increases above $1,550, say to $1,700, then you'll earn a profit of $15,000, since you'll buy the gold for $155,000 and sell it at the spot market for $170,000. If it instead falls to $1,400, then you'll lose $15,000, since you'll have to buy the gold at a future price that's higher than the current spot price. But what if instead of expecting gold prices to rise, you actually expect them to fall? With an impending recession, you may assume the government and central bank will stimulate the economy, encouraging investors to leave gold and invest in the stock market, thereby depressing gold prices. 
Well, by going short and agreeing to sell the gold in a year's time, you invert the return. If the price falls below $1,550, you would be able to buy gold at the lower spot price and sell at the higher forward price to profit. Now you may be wondering how you're going to manage receiving 100 ounces of gold, or better yet, delivering it if you short the contract. You may be able to scavenge up a few ounces of gold from your local pawn shop, but the exchange may not accept secondhand wedding bands and watches as payment. Well, while you can choose a future contract that does involve physical delivery of an asset, a contract can be designed to instead settle in cash, meaning the asset in question doesn't actually change hands. Cash is simply debited and credited to the appropriate accounts. You can also cash out of your position at any time before expiration by netting it against an opposite position. If you've shorted the gold future contract and decide to cash out halfway through, you can do so by taking a long position in a contract with the same underlying asset, quantity and delivery date. The two contracts will effectively cancel each other out and you will earn a profit equal to the difference in the future prices. The reason it's possible for future contracts to be netted out is that the contracts themselves are highly standardized and trade on an exchange, meaning it's fairly easy to find long and short positions for a 100 ounce gold contract through your broker. There are more customizable contracts known as forwards that are directly negotiated between parties and can involve any amount of the underlying asset, but these are more often used by companies looking to hedge, so they're not often used by speculators. So, futures seem to offer a pretty convenient method for gaining exposure to commodities, but as with any investment, they do come with their own risks. For one, future contracts involve the use of leverage, something that amplifies how much you can gain or lose from your investment. We've discussed leverage in our video about shorting, which you can watch for further detail, but to summarize, futures only require a fraction of the contract's value to be invested by the speculator. With our example, if we had taken a long position in the $155,000 gold contract, our broker would initially only require that we deposit a margin, effectively some percentage of the value of the contract, as a deposit on the position. You may, for example, only need to have 5% of the $155,000 contract, or $7,750 in the account. This may seem convenient, but it opens the door to pretty substantial losses. If gold prices fell to, say, $1,000 an ounce, you would lose $55,000, a 710% loss on your initial deposit. Needless to say, futures are not for the inexperienced investor. And while they may seem straightforward enough, they maintain a vast array of applications. They not only provide exposure to certain assets, but they can be used to fundamentally alter the risk return features of your portfolio, allowing investors to add and remove market risk and even freeze returns from certain positions. Further yet, investors use forward prices as an indicator of consensus estimates, showing investors what the market believes an asset is worth while offering insights into the asset's price patterns. You can visualize these patterns with something called a future curve, a graph that shows the forward price of an asset for different contract expiration dates. For gold, we see an upward slope, meaning that you need to pay more if you want to buy the gold at a later date. And this curve may sometimes change to reflect changing market dynamics. A steeper curve could represent an expected price appreciation. And look at this future curve for natural gas. Notice the cyclicality? This is because the price of natural gas is heavily influenced by the seasons, more of it is purchased in the winter months when it's used for heating, so forward prices are higher for those periods. As you can see, forward prices can provide quite a bit of information, and there are many ways in which investors use them. While I've just scratched the surface on their applications, hopefully I've given you enough information to broadly understand how they work. Futures are rarely part of a standard portfolio, and indeed you should seek further education before investing in a contract, but next time you see that tiny number in the corner of your screen, Take a moment to appreciate its significance and the small glimpse into the future it provides. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, make sure to hit that like button. And if you like what we're doing here, make sure to subscribe. Hit the bell icon if you want notifications about future videos. If you have any feedback or topics you want me to cover in a future video, leave a comment down below. For The Plain Bagel, my name is Richard Coffin. Thanks for joining me today. This video is sponsored by Skillshare. Skillshare, as the name implies, is a great place to learn a new skill or mastery. It's a website that offers thousands of classes on a variety of topics, and it's a service I've been using for some time now to better develop the channel and just my other hobbies. 
Most recently, I've actually been diving into graphic design since with almost 100,000 subscribers, it's probably about time I figured out how to draw and design. And a great course that I'm currently using is customizing type with Draplin, creating word marks that work, a video series that dives into customizing fonts. And if you're looking for more financial videos, Investing 101 Understanding Stocks discusses basic stock investing and covers ratios and other important topics you'll need to know if you're investing by yourself. Skillshare offers these courses and many, many more on everything from painting and creative writing to coding and analytics. And if you're interested in trying it out, you can access it for free for two months by visiting skl.sh slash theplainbagel3. The link will give you a trial of Skillshare's premium membership that normally costs $10 a month. And it'll support the channel, showing Skillshare that I sent you their way. So whether you're looking to further develop a professional skill or just interested in trying something new, I encourage you to check out Skillshare.